Good day, everyone. Before we start, we have a disclosure. Please be aware of risk in the future trading. Uh, today is Friday, and it um, uh, wasn't bad at all for Friday. And uh, now it's 2.31 p.m., 18 January, uh, Friday. So those are the last two trades uh, on the ES and NASDAQ. Uh, for the ones who are not familiar with this system here, the market analyzer and the charts, they are based on a ATM, ATM strategy and a full automated trading. As you see here, the ES, we have an entry at uh, 69 level. You can see the auto trade took a trade at 68.75. And then we have the NASDAQ entry uh, uh, around 8.05.75. This is the entry price. And this is exactly where is this entry, 8.05.75. The market analyzer is based on one minute, one minute only, and one lot. But you can use on the chart if you want it, one contract, two contracts, or three contracts, whatever you like. So right now, based on the last signal, we have 10 takes on that trade. And then the NASDAQ, 85 takes. And then the YM from the last entry, not the whole day, 17. So from the last entry, right now we have 454 ticks based on the last entry. What is nice about it, once you get to know the system, it does, does not require a lot of time to learn that system. It takes you maybe weeks, a uh, couple of three weeks. But then once you get to know uh, how things work in the um, uh, it is very straightforward, signal entry, pullback re-entry, uh, and uh, fully automated. The fully automated trade is uh, put it right at the target with the stop loss. The stop loss is on a trailing stop. And then if you look, this is really something, that if we can get some more, the target expand. It does not stay uh, on the target. As you notice on the video, when uh, we see or the system feel like there is more to this short trade, it's going to uh, expand the, the target. Right now, uh, if we look at the NASDAQ, uh, we have the target at 75.75. So if this market is trending, the system does it uh, just the way when you are trading manually. That auto trade here, uh, and like uh, the other normal auto trade, like this one here, a basic auto trade, it takes left and right, and then uh, you, once you hit the target, uh, this is it. But this one here is a total different, where you can have the entry um, without using any motion. At the same time, if you don't want to mess with it, you can leave uh, the trading stop. The trading stop is based on a FIB. It's not a, just a dummy trailing stop. I never use a dummy trailing stop. And um, uh, so uh, this is really accurate where the trailing stop stays on the FIBS. And once the signal fire, it hit uh, the target uh, direction. And then the trailing stop start, start moving uh, with the, the, uh, the FIB lines. Uh, this is an extremely smart. At the same time, you're leaving a little gap between uh, the actual price and the trailing stop. So this way, um, uh, when there is a pullback re-entry, as an example here, those are your, your, one of your best FIBs ever came out. And uh, as you see here on the, on the ES, the... Uh, the ES is stopped right at your FIB line. And, and this is something also for uh, the trader uh, to calculate it if you wanted to take that trade or he's going to stick all the way to the target. So uh, you can see how this market stopped at this FIB line with the three bars. 
So if it, there is any kind of pullback, so we are a little bit given gap for this market to go back and forth and stay concentrated on the target. Once we hit the target, we are done. So right now, the auto trade is not going to be taking any more trade. It's going to wave all the sideway market or all the chop market. And then once we have a long signal, then we're going to fire a signal again. So with the short trade, uh, it's not going to uh, take any more short. Once we hit the target, it is over. Uh, the auto trade is not going to be taking any trades until the new uh, long trade uh, come out. You can see how the pullback right now on the ES. And what is the beauty about it, you can see also how sometimes the trading stop pulled back a little bit when the market pulled back. And no one has made that before. No one. Uh, like um, if you take a normal auto trade, uh, we can take another auto trade. Let's try to find an example. Like on a normal auto trade, um, keep if the market is taken long, it's going to re-enter the market long here, as you see. But this one here, if uh, took the short and hit the target, it's going to stay away from the sideways uh, market, the chop market, all this, uh, you know, trouble in the market, which sometimes an auto trade can get in trouble over that. So this is a really, um, really, really nice. So right now it's 2.37 p.m. Uh, and uh, we will uh, see, look at this on the NASDAQ. We missed hitting the target uh, within a couple ticks. But also you can feed the auto trade. Uh, you want it uh, two, three ticks or five ticks before, before the target. And then the auto trade will put the target three, four ticks uh, below or above the target if you want to. Or if you want to leave it uh, right at the target, you can leave it right at the target. So this is really, uh, look, you see how now when we are trying to hit the target, this is really beautiful. Now we the system expanded by itself. Now we have uh, 71.50. So the more this market is going to recalculate and it's going to look at this, look, you know, look. So the whole thing, if you look at the NASDAQ, how it's pulling back and forth, uh, trying to get the most out of that trade. You never see that in any auto trade. So I'm going to leave it a little bit uh, to see how the market react or how the auto trade react on every pullback and uh, when the market is really going down we trying to uh, it is absolutely uh, look at this no one ever have made something like this you see now you can see the target is changing from uh, 70 75 you see how it is reacting to the market uh, price action this is, look at this, now it's 71, 75, you see? Now it's going up to it, and, uh, and, uh, and it's trying to close that trade. What actually this one is doing is, uh, it is like you are manually trading, but uh, it's only automatic trading. This is really amazing. Uh, the same story, at the moment we have 515, uh, 521 ticks. Uh, based on the last entry. One of the advantage of it that uh, even for a guys on a smaller account, you can take one ES as an example today. On one ES on the last entry signal, uh, we have 262, 590, and 195. So also one of the smart things you can do is stay putting uh, two, three contracts on one auto trade and uh, hoping that nothing gonna go wrong with your auto trade. One of the most success uh, things in the future that uh, if you hedge the market, so in other words, if you put one ES, one NASDAQ, and one Dow Jones, no matter what you do, uh, even if the ES today did go south, it's become irrelevant because we have a three horses uh, on the run. We don't have one horse. 
So if that horse dies on us, we have a losing day. So it is very smart how to manage your money. It's one of the most important things in an automated trade, uh, how to manage the risk. Uh, not to just daydreaming about the money, is also we need to manage uh, um, the risk of losing as well, because it cannot be uh, in this trading industry winning all the time. This is never going to happen. So we always have to calculate how much we can afford to lose for today. So be in case if something did go wrong or not. So in case if uh, you, we have one NASDAQ, one Dow Jones, and one ES, and today the NASDAQ did go south and did not make money, so we still can cover with the other two. This is very clever to do. As an example, if you have the fib lines, as you see here, we have missed by a couple ticks. That's irrelevant. If I wanted to close it, I could have closed it. But now we can see from the fib lines, it's coming here and it's going to be rejected, and it's all automatic. And then if you wanted to take that trade or close that trade and call it up for today, you can. But you can sit down and relax because this market now is on the pullback. On a dummy trading stop, those uh, conventional older version of an auto trade, you have to use a dummy trading stop, which most of the time when you are running on a very nice trend, uh, those dummy trading stop, you know, 12 takes and 20 takes and but, you know, they fire back at you. Uh, really, they are not... I, I never like a dummy trailing stop. I like secure a profit and then give, give room to this market to go back and forth. As an example here, this is a big example. If we, we could have closed this one here, but when there is a pullback, if you are using on a dummy trading stop, that would, have, well, that, that would have knocked you out of this trade. But now, because of this pullback, now this auto trade is going to close that trade, both of them. And let's see, it's finished, it's done. We hit right at the target, and actually we have not missed anything. Because right now the uh, target has recalculated in conjunction with the, floor and, with the FIB, and this is a major FIB. So as you see right now on that NASDAQ, it's finished, and now there is a pullback, and the probability is going back to this area, 88. So what happened in here, you have managed to get the maximum out of that trade. So one of the secrets is you should not be <clears throat> trading all the time. The more you expose your, your uh, account, your real-life account, the more you are in danger. Think about it that you are sitting uh, uh, on a blackjack on a table where you're shoveling cards all day long. Uh, you can win, but if you are sitting on that table all day long, you're going to wind up losing. So, guys, this is not smart to be in the market all the day. And look at this NASDAQ. It's done. It's finished. It's over. Those couple bars or those couple takes, they become irrelevant. And now look at this accuracy. Is came in right to our zone, to the take. You see that? It struggled to our zone, the first one, and now is a struggling on the second one. Once we cross this one, we know we are on a home run. Another thing is that it is very clever because now I'm using a fully automated. So if I take this one here, it's going to go back. But also you have the luxury to use an ATM and an ATM strategy which on, um, when we're going to go back live on the YouTube, I normally use uh, an ATM. Why? Because an ATM, you can take your daily uh, or your target anywhere you want, and you can say, or oh, you want to move your stop loss. So personally, I like the ATM. <laughs> but most of the guys, they like fully automated. They don't want to mess with it. I totally respect that. As you see here, the market right now uh, uh, got uh, stuck between those two lines, you see? And it's going to be projecting from the 64. It is clear as a whistle how it is the market going to move. It is very clear because we're not following the market. We are trying to predict the market. This is a very, uh, a lot of 90% of the traders, they fell 
to that mistake that they follow indicators. Indicators follow the market. So if you are using a MACD or, or an ATR, this, this ATR is telling you the market is up when the bar is up or if it is down. I don't see what is the, 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 the big deal about it because those indicators, there are not, you are trading the futures and you are using instruments following the market, not predicting the market. So here's the question, how it is working for you. It will never work for you. You might make a day or two, but it will never work for you because you are following the market. You're not predicting the market. And uh, that it is the big secret about the future, not to follow the market. You need to wait on the market to come into your direction and not follow in the market and fall to this traps where there is a lot of fake movement in the market. This is, this is a nightmare. And the only time you're going to learn it, <laughs> honestly, folks, the only time you're going to learn it by sitting behind your computer and use time. Uh, you cannot download it from a hard disk and put it in your brain. It is, um, it is something that you need to um, use some time on it to, to know when or spot when there is a fake movement in the market or not. The same story on the Forex. And uh, <clears throat> one minute we are using a mini account. Right now we have 62 pips, 62 pips in the profit based on a 10,000 uh, dollar account. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Here are the scalpers. We will be covering the scalpers, and here are the swing trading. So, so we will be covering uh, the swing trading as well. Uh, it is really good. Um, uh, uh, we so let's uh, look at the swing trading. Uh, actually, I didn't uh, run the CL today, and I'll show you why I didn't run the CL. Uh, but uh, uh, we we ran uh, the the auto trades all of them by nine o'clock. So so as you see, the uh, it was a small trade here and a small trade there, um, and then one trade on the on the four range. Uh, look at this baby has skipped all this timing because of the chop. This is what I want to try to get you. All of them, they are based on a 400. But um, you know, before I go there, I want to show you something on, on um, the surprise action. Uh, this is uh, the signal on the price action today. Uh, I didn't run the auto trade on the DAX, neither the gold. I only have uh, the YM. I didn't run it on a 30-year treasury bond. As you see, they are 0, 0, 0. Uh, uh, right now, there is a 650 on that, this one. This is 650 on this one because um, the, the ES was on a different direction. But... Uh, what I like about that system is the NASDAQ and the YM. Why? Uh, because uh, it is $5 per tick, and for some reason, uh, it is not unusual to gain a lot of ticks on those, even on the one contract. Uh, those that were running the NASDAQ, as you see, they were on two contracts, and the YM, they were on two contracts. So today, we were running the YM NASDAQ, and in ES earlier time, we had a problem, but uh, this is the last trade, irrelevant. Today, on those three instruments, there were 6,047, you know. And um, the, the, the beauty about it that uh, uh, you can, um, there is no certain time. You can trade it uh, any time you like. Uh, let's go back on the CL to tell you why uh, I didn't trade the CL. I had actually a little problem on the CL today. Uh, earlier today, around 8.45, when we first started, uh, for some reason, uh, if you see this chart, 
I don't know if it's my computer or my reset database. I don't want to get involved in it. At the end of the day, we, I had a problem with the CL. As you see, the real price around 845 on the on the dome was uh, 5293, and on my charts they were showing 5282. Uh, but then after I closed Ninja Trader and reset my database and uh, uh, then it worked and uh, this is another one so maybe if you guys have experienced that doesn't matter which system you are using it has nothing to do with our system because as you see this is this is a clean chart has no indicators in it zero indicators nothing in it clean chart and the number here was 52.94 and uh, 52.95. So in case if you have something like this, uh, you need to flat out everything immediately and um, uh, try to um, uh, reset your database. If you don't know how to reset your database, uh, try to Google it. Uh, this is your best option and try to reset it. Sometimes it can happen uh, on any platform. We don't have to pick on a Ninja Trader 8. It could be on any platform. But uh, once you reset your uh, database, uh, then everything works. So uh, before you go ahead and call uh, the technicians on Ninja, or before you start panicking, try to close your Ninja, open it. If it's still not working, Try to reset your database, and then everything will start working. Uh, so let's go back on um, an ES today performance. If you look at the 244 chart, uh, we also started around 9 o'clock. And uh, we had a few trades on the 244 takes. Finally... Uh, we, are, we were done around 12.17, uh, and uh, that was a lot of trades for swing trading. And uh, on the, on the uh, uh, ES, uh, we had one, two, three trades, and it was done. And then on the one minute, uh, we had one, two, trade and it was done. That was nice. Uh, the one minute was pretty nice. We don't know, it could be tomorrow, the one minute it, uh, is going to be into the job market. I don't know. But uh, the most important to find what which time frame is consistent for you and uh, how much you can afford to risk in the market. If you use the higher time frame, if like you take a 244, stand, one, stand 150, um, you're gonna be cleaning some of the noises in the market, it's up to you. Or if you want it to be a little bit cheap on the, this auto trade does not require any optimization. It does not have a training and stuff, it does not have target. Uh, if this market is trending, it's going to stay on that trade. Uh, whether it is, um, even if it's on $500, all of them, they are on five. As you see, this one here closed above 675, and this one 775, and this one 1525. Uh, because if you are on the last trade and the market go into your favor, that auto trade is not closing. It's going to stay. So this is your lucky day if this market trended. Uh, and if the, uh, the market not trending, also you're taking advantage of it, at the minute you are on, the, on a 500, somewhere around the 500, it's gonna stop. So th this is a very straightforward, uh, no optimization required, back testing, forward testing, is irrelevant you just turn them on turn them off very friendly use and um, nothing we can do just turn them on and turn them off and if you don't like a big stop loss 
We can use uh, small takes, uh, 150 takes, one minute, and the system figure out uh, the rest. Uh, let's look at the NASDAQ. Uh, for the four range, we had a really actually two losing trade right at the start of the NASDAQ. And then, um, but you, as you see, the, the stop losses are not big. And then we, we had one, two, three, four, four trade, and it was done. Whoever is using the one minute, he hit the jackpot on the, on the NASDAQ. So today, a little bit of chop at the beginning, around 8 o'clock, 8.59. And then when the market is trended, this auto trade is, is not going to miss on any movement. Uh, if you see, when the market is trending, this one here is a $500 target. But on the last trade, I mean, this is a really beautiful run. And look, we, we grabbed the highlight of that day. And look at this beauty, especially for those guys that like to keep trading 24-7. Believe me or not, you would have given up all your profit in here. You would have given it all back right there. So what, what is the beauty about the swing trading, if this market moving, you're not going to be missing trade. You don't need to do optimization, uh, forward testing, and back testing. Now... Is any risk in a trading? Yes, welcome to trading. Is it every day winning trading? No, sir, it's not. You're going to have a chop days. You're going to have a good days. As long as you have consistency and a good management, uh, then uh, leave the rest on the auto trade. But uh, especially for those guys that get frustrated with a three, $4,000 account expecting to make $1,000 a day. What they are expecting is more than what is the best trader in the world can do. What they are expecting 100% every day. That is not going to happen. That is not going to happen, folks. There is no way you can make 100% every day. There is some days you can make 100%, but not every day. You also have to think about losing days. So... And uh, if you cannot accept this fact, then you need to stay away from trading because you're going to stay uh, in the circle. And uh, the worst part is uh, that the problem is it's not uh, when the trader cannot clear 100%, he don't blame himself. He blames the auto trade. He blames the injured trader. He blames his broker. But... Uh, he is in denial to understand a lack of experience, a lack of knowledge, a lack of money that brought him to that disaster. He will not accept that. He will think, what's wrong with the platform? What's wrong with the, with the auto trade? And uh, that's why uh, the guy is staying in denial until he run out of money, and then he leaves that business mad. And then the worst part, once you become a trader, you never can leave that business alone. Then you will see, we have seen for the last 28 years the same pattern. And then he disappeared from the trader for many years or many months, and then when he come back, he is a much more mature trader because now he starts recalculating. He got his finger burns. Now he become more mature. So uh, this is this pattern. We have seen it for the last 28 years. And you always uh, being in a denial. Then you go away. And then you come back. You are more mature. Then you come back. You are more mature. Until you start... Um, get in full respect for this business because when you don't respect that business, you don't understand movement and you think it's, it's an easy money. No, it's not an easy money in the trading. Uh, it is about knowledge, 
patient respect to what you're looking at at the end of the day is all about money honestly guys this is honest god truth so it's up to you what you want to do with it we still have on the nasdaq some trades has not closed oh okay we have one just closed and uh, today we say it the way it is folks today we were struggling on the three minutes and uh, we, we we got lucky with uh, one trade on the last trade right now and uh, but it was a struggle all day long on that uh, chart uh, let's look um, at the DAX uh, for a second for the DAX traders let's take first uh, the let's take this one here with this one here the one minute today was uh, getting in a lot of chop the DAX uh, the first trade on the DAX today uh, was around the 9, 927, uh, somewhere around there. And uh, we had a brutal three losing trade, actually. But also, if you look at some of those trades, are not they are very acceptable for, for DAX. They're not really hard. And then on the last run, we nailed 1,100. If we look at the three minutes... Also, this does was uh, not good to, uh, at all today. Uh, on the on the 150 takes, also was a struggling today. So uh, it was a bit hard on a Friday to trade DAX, and uh, this one here barely made it on the 244 takes. I mean, on the DAX, when we're talking about DAX, anything below 1,000 is not to really trade on the DAX because the risk is high the way it moved. So all of them on a 500, but this is not good. Uh, DAX should be uh, all the time above 1,000. And uh, on this one here, on the 288, also we started uh, around um, the same time, all of them. Also we had the two losing trade and then at the end made it, but uh, it was a struggling day for the DAX anyway. Let's take a couple more charts on the YM. On the YM, the 288 takes. Also, it was a struggling day on the, the YM, in and out, and going in a circle. Barely made it. And um, also, this one here was uh, on the YM. Uh, also, it was uh, a little bit chop. Now, I want to show you the scalper on the NT8 market order. Uh, on the scalper, uh, we are using this one here, NT8, uh, market order. And uh, you see on the one minute, nailed 15.25. On the 150 takes, made 5.75, A and B. And uh, A scalp, 5.75, B scalp, 500. All of them market order. And... Um, uh, and the full range 575. Uh, this is here a big variety of the NASDAQ, down zone, CL, all of them here. Uh, the NASDAQ, one minute, a scalper, 720 on the scalping. CL, 150 takes, all of them market order. B scalper, a scalp, 540 on the YM. YM full range, 510, all of them $500 target. This one here, NASDAQ 150 takes. We're using Hakanachi 150 takes. And then uh, CL, uh, we have 500, B scalper, 30 year treasury bond. 30 uh, year treasury bond is a story uh, before uh, New Year Eve was running very smoothly but right now the 30-year treasury bond is it is it, there is a lot of a chop in the 30-year treasury bond so hopefully this market is going to kick in uh, i will show you something very interesting after that with the time frames and all this 
And uh, this one here, there is a NASDAQ full range. I mean, there is a plenty. All of them hit the targets. Uh, I want to show you something very interesting about this market after New Year's Eve. If you stay with me for one second. This is a, a weekly performance um, uh, on the scalpers. And actually, uh, the CL because, excuse me, we changed middle of the week uh, the, the, the CL from 02 to 03. So we have not accomplished anything with the 03 at, uh, at all on the CL uh, with the scalpers. But uh, on the B scalper, it did very well the, for the last couple of days at the CL. Actually, the best performance was the ES on the B scalper to our traders. Uh, so this is uh, was uh, pretty, pretty interesting. And again, if you look on the 30-year Treasury bond, did not much for one week, but um, uh, the Nasdaq become uh, really uh, the 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 instrument to trade, actually, especially on the swing trading and the price action. But this is not what a I'd like to show you that um, uh, before the New Year Eve, uh, about the timing on the auto trades and after New Year Eve, if you bear with me one second, I'll show you. Uh, this is uh, the counter performance on four days. Monday was not on, it was on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, First of all, a lot of traders, they make a mistake with the profit factor, which is not true. They keep your eye occupied on the profit factor, which is not where the auto trade should be Look at. Actually, uh, this one here, the profit factor is 152. It's very normal. This is without Renko bar, of course. If you're going to use a Renko bar, I can get it... Uh, to 4.5 if we want to use a Renko bar because a Renko bar and all those whiny chart, you know, looking weird, uh, the bars move, they give fake uh, results. But this is what happened based on minutes and takes. So this is not to just backtesting, it is what happened last this week here, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. If you look at the maximum recovery, it is 0 0.46. And this is very important in, a, in an automated trading. Because if you are using a Renko bar, trying to get one of those Renko bar you have, uh, you can get uh, 4.5 uh, profit factor. But then when you go down here, it says recovery days, 25 days. 30 days. What does that mean? In the plain English, that uh, 25 days you have to trade without losing any trade during this time. If you lose one day, now you have to aid another 25. Now you have to work 50 days without losing any trades, and that is impossible. Even it's impossible to, to trade one week without having a losing day. So, uh, this is where the most important, but what uh, really uh, caught my attention today, you know, for some reason, I cannot get this one down, and I'm not going to be messed with it now at the end of the day. But um, we can look at it in a, a different way. I don't know why. I, I cannot expand it right now all the way. But we can find an alternative to do that. Um, this is the daily, and uh, this is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. As you see, I didn't use it on um, uh, on Monday. But we can find an alternative. I know there is a way we can do that. Um,
Here is your total efficiency. Weekly net profit. Summary. Let me see. Period. Okay. That's what our we can see it in a different way because I couldn't extend this one here. I don't know why. Um, uh, before the last year, before this Christmas and New Year Eve, the high time was around uh, 8 a.m. to start scalping. 8 a.m. was 8 and 9 o'clock. Uh, it was the highest time of profit on the scalper. Now, if we look after New Year Eve, the high time is 1 o'clock p.m. So the market is practically upside down, where before New Year Eve, uh, the, the market was, the high time uh, was around 8 and 9 o'clock. Those you can start your scalper. But now after New Year Eve, and the market has not kicked in, so uh, 3 p.m., I'm not going to touch this one. Th 3 a.m., I'm not going to touch this one. But the second one, it is the 2 p.m., is uh, 21.75. This is the hour where the highest time this auto trade made money. So the first highest time, this is 1 p.m. I've never seen anything like this. And this one has been running for one week. 12 o'clock, uh, uh, just a second, guys. So if we look at uh, 12 o'clock, it was a very good time. 4 o'clock, I mean, we're not interested in this. 8 a.m. is not the highest time. It was 1,867. Oh, I'm sorry to tell you. This one here, it is uh, based on a CL2 and a CL3 the, because we have changed uh, uh, contract on the 0390 and ES, NASDAQ, YM, and uh, the 30 year Treasury bond. So those are based on your normal uh, the CL219, CL319. ES 319, NASDAQ 319, YM 319, and 30. So uh, the the 8 o'clock AM and the 9, 9 o'clock AM, uh, actually, they were not uh, the best performing. Uh, the, the best performance was around 1 o'clock. So those, uh, I wish I can uh, try again, but for some reason, I cannot expand it all. Uh, weekly, let me see. Yeah. I cannot expand it. No matter what I do, I cannot take it all the way down. I'm having a problem with it. I, I don't feel like I want to mess with it. So... Uh, those are, we can see it from here. And actually, if you click, and you can uh, see the worst performance, which is very fine. 1 a.m., we're not interested. 4 a.m., actually, 7, uh, 7 a, uh, p.m. was not. Uh, 10 a.m. was not. So 10 a.m. was not the best performance on the scalpers. Uh, neither nine eleven. I'm not. I'm not interested in. A... And um, so eleven a.m. It was okay. So the if we click right again, I'm sorry because I have a lot of people calling and sending emails. So sometimes I get distracted. So the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is uh, the, uh, right now, if we look at it, the 12, the 8 and 9 o'clock, uh, they're not the best timing at all.
at the moment. So uh, uh, that's how it is. The market is upside down. We hope this market is going to kick in very soon. Uh, folks, that's all what we have for, the, for today. Uh, I wish you a very nice weekend. And uh, try, please, to be cautious uh, uh, for next week. Uh, the market is a little bit hard at the moment. Uh, be careful. Uh, try to be... Um, take it easy. Don't burn out with you. And don't jump on every trade. I want to say God bless you all. And I wish you a really pleasant weekend. Thank you all. Bye for now.